Hello and welcome to Brawl News. We're about to turn some time over to Kairos Time, our chief brawlnalist for your favorite segment of the week, the Brawlympics. Jerry, I just wanted you to know that I really do hate you. Make sure you stick around afterwards for Brawl Justice, where we'll give you the inside scoop on Stewie McBeaker's recent disappearance. Word has it, the lead suspect is none other than the Brawl News Guy. Hey, I'm the Brawl News Guy! Jerry, do you seriously expect me to cover a news story where I'm the lead suspect? Come on! Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Stein, and it is time for another Brawlympics! That's right guys, today we're going to be answering that very important question, which brawler is the strongest? Now this Brawlympics event is going to put every brawler up against each other in a test that combines all of their characteristics, including damage per second, their health, their reload speed, their super recharge rate, and even their star power. Now the rules are simple. Each brawler is going to be backed up against a wall with one tile between them and their opponent. Both brawlers must auto-aim at the exact same moment to try and take out the enemy brawler before they get taken out themselves. For this video, I actually had two tablets right next to each other, pressing auto-aim at the exact same moment to make sure that it was accurate. I even double and sometimes even triple checked the brawlers. Now I actually spam the auto aim on the super button so that if a super happened to charge up, they may use their super to help out if it does actually give them a benefit. Brawlers must be positioned directly horizontal with each other and may not move unless their attack actually forces them to move like Mortis. If both brawlers take each other out, then the brawler that dies first is the loser. And now that you understand the rules for this event, go ahead and put down in the comment section below which three brawlers you think are are going to be the victors for this event. And you get bonus points if you get them in the right order. Starting out in dead last, we have Piper coming in 22nd place for three different reasons. First of all, is the fact that the brawlers have only one tile between them, which means that Piper is stuck doing minimal damage. The second is the fact that she's tied for with several other brawlers for the lowest HP in the game, making her easy for the brawlers to take her out. And the third is the fact that Piper has a very slow unload speed, which means that it takes her a while to actually fire off her shots. Spike comes in 21st place due to his low HP and low damage. It is important to note that if Spike was actually angled differently, then he would deal three spikes worth of damage on the enemy brawler, which would actually increase his rank. But the fact that he has to be in line directly horizontally with his opponent means that he only deals two spikes worth of damage with each attack, and that makes him struggle a little bit more. Penny takes 20th place, where she is only able to slightly beat out Spike. They actually have the same unload speed, but Penny's extra health allows her to outlast Spike. If Spike could land one additional spike, then he would actually beat her, but she happens to outplay him with the current rule setup. Poor Spike, he could have done so much better. Jessie finds herself in 19th place. Now Jessie and Penny have the same amount of health, Penny's shot actually deals slightly more damage, and they actually have the same unload speed, but Jessie's attack reloads 0.2 seconds faster, which allows her to outfire Penny and take her out. Crow takes out Jessie in 18th place. Now, Jessie would normally be able to three-shot Crow, but because of his star power, that actually decreases her attack damage by 10%, which requires a fourth shot for Jesse to take him out. Because Crow's reload speed is 0.3 seconds faster than Jesse's, he is able to fire a fourth shot with just enough damage to take her out. Poco comes in 17th place where he is barely able to survive Crow's poison with a sliver of health. Barley sweeps Poco before he can even heal up, giving Barley 16th place. Now Poco would normally require four hits to take out Barley, but Barley's high damaging attacks actually take him out even though they do take a bit of time to deal complete damage. Now that covers the worst seven of the 22 brawlers for this event. Maybe some of them surprised you and maybe they didn't. Either way, it's about to get more interesting. Coming in 15th place is Nita. The call between Nita and Barley is very close. Nita normally requires three hits to take out Barley, but with Barley's star power, he heals just enough to require four hits from Nita. Barley only requires three hits to completely take out Nita, but the fact that his attack takes a little bit of time before it actually deals complete damage gives Nita just enough time to be able to quickly slip out that fourth attack, taking out Barley right before Nita actually gets taken out herself. Although both brawlers actually end up falling in this event, Barley dies a fraction of a second before Nita, meaning that Nita takes 
15th place. In 14th place, we've got Thicka, I mean Rico. Now, Nita requires 4 hits to take out Rico, while Rico only requires 2.5 hits to take out Nita. Despite Nita's fast reload and unload speeds, Rico's fast and consistent damage allows him to take her out first. Interestingly, out of all of the brawlers with the lowest amount of HP in the game, Rico ranks highest in this challenge. Coming in 13th place is Dynamite. Now, both Rico and Dynamite require 2 full attacks to take each other out, but despite the delay between when Dynamite throws his attack and before it actually explodes, he's still able to unload his attacks faster than Rico is, allowing him to barely survive with only a sliver of health. If only one more bouncy ball would have hit Dynamite, then he would have actually been taken out by Rico. Also, if Rico would have been allowed to bounce his shots off of the wall first, then hitting Dynamite, he actually would have lost to Rico. But because today's event is all about using auto-aim, Dynamite does end up taking the victory. Brock actually takes 12th place. Brock requires 3 hits to take out Dynamite, while Dynamite only requires 2 to take out Brock. But because Brock is able to release 3 rockets before Dynamite's second attack actually blows up, means that Brock does take the victory, <laughs> just barely before he ends up dying himself. Another interesting matchup is actually Terra, who takes 11th place. Both Brock and Terra require three shots to actually take each other out. This would even be true if Brock's star power was not a factor. But Terra actually slightly takes out Brock sooner because her unload speed is 0.1 second faster than Brock's, giving her just enough time to fire off that third attack before Brock does. I guess it pays off to attack with really lightweight cards like that. Mortis actually takes 10th place against Terra. Now, Terra and Mortis require four attacks to take each other out, but Mortis is actually able to get that fourth attack in faster than Terra is, which leaves him victorious. What's really interesting is that Mortis's reload speed is actually slower than Terra's, but while most brawlers actually have time in between their attacks where they aren't able to reload, Mortis is actually unique in the fact that he has zero time when he is not reloading his attacks. This this means that Mortis will actually charge his fourth attack before Terra, even though she has a faster reload speed than Mortis. Now here's where things get a little awkward, and I'm not talking about the cringe jokes that I've been making throughout this video. So normally Dynamite would actually get 13th place, but when he faces up against Mortis, he can actually beat Mortis because his star power helps him dodge one of Mortis's shots when Mortis attacks and is right up on top of Dynamite. Mortis takes four shots to actually take out Dynamite, while Dynamite only requires three to take out Mortis, but in this case, Dynamite dodges Mortis's third hit with a jump and Mortis dodges Dynamite's third hit with a dash. This allows Dynamite to take out Mortis before Mortis can re reload enough attacks to actually kill Dynamite. So in this example, uh, I guess Dynamite is 10th, except that he loses to Brock and Terra. So uh, yeah, I don't know where Dynamite is. I'll let you guys decide if Dynamite is 13th or 10th. Okay guys, we are finally down to the final top nine brawlers for this event with Colt as number nine. Now Colt actually takes down Mortis with a sliver of health well before Mortis is actually able to charge up his attack. This is because it only takes 2.1 of Colt's attacks to take out Mortis while Mortis requires four shots to take out Colt. The competition only gets more hot with Bo taking out Colt for eighth place. Now while both brawlers only require two complete attacks to take each other out, Bo is able to unload his three arrows faster than Colt is able to unload his six bullets, and that leaves Bo with just a sliver of health. Coming in seventh place is Shelly. Now, Shelly and Bo require three attacks in order to take each other out, but while Bo requires time to fire off all three arrows for an attack, Shelly is able to unleash her attack in one quick go, allowing her to take Bo out. Coming in sixth place is Leon. Now, while Shelly is able to take out Leon in three three shots, Leon only requires two shots to take Shelly out. Now, Leon is interestingly enough highest ranked in this competition out of all of the brawlers that have less than 5,000 HP. What Leon lacks in health, he makes up for in an insane amount of damage up close. Frank smashes his way into fifth place. Now, Leon requires 3.2 attacks in order to take out Frank. Now, because Frank is able to survive three complete attacks from Leon with just a sliver of health, he is able to beat Leon out before Leon can actually start firing off that fourth attack despite Frank's attack delay. Coming in fourth place, we have Daryl. We decided to actually use his super and then wait until his shield disappears before actually firing off. This allows Daryl to completely obliterate Frank because he can use his super to actually knock Frank back, therefore disrupting 
Frank's attack. If Daryl was not able to actually get close up with his super, Daryl would require 7 attacks to hit with that 30 fourths of, of his regular damage, while Frank would only require 4, and that would mean that Frank actually normally would have win. But once again, for this event, supers do actually matter, meaning that Daryl does take that 4th position. Okay guys, now we have talked about every single brawler in the game, with the exception of the top three. Were you able to guess the three brawlers that made it into the top? Even more impressive, and for bonus internet cookie points, would be is if you were able to guess them in the correct order. Charging into that number three spot is Bull. Now, from a distance with one tile between Bull and Daryl, only three of the five projectiles from Bull's attack actually hit Daryl. When Daryl uses his super, it looks like he's actually going to win, but by this point, Bull's star power activates, allowing him to reload and unload his shots super quickly. This means that he's able to unload his fourth attack soon after Daryl actually starts rolling, giving Bull the victory. Slamming his way into the number two position is going to be El Primo. Now normally, Bull is able to take out El Primo in three complete shots if he is actually close enough for his five projectiles to actually hit. But with one tile between them, only three of the five projectiles hit, meaning that it would require five shots for Bull to beat El Primo. As such, El Primo is able to deal an insane amount of damage, charge up his super, and body slam onto Bull and take him out before Bull is able to actually unload his fourth shot. Finally, guys, we have the number one brawler for the strongest brawler Brawl Olympics event, and that is going to be coming in at 6,160 health and 3,276 total damage for a single attack. Taking home the gold medal is going to be Pam. Now normally, El Primo would be able to take out Pam in three attacks along with one punch from his fourth attack, but Pam only requires two complete attacks along with four projectiles from the nine that she shoots out toward El Primo. Interestingly enough, El Primo and Pam actually have the same DPS. It's just that El Primo has more health and a faster reload speed, while Pam actually is able to deal more damage with a single attack. But the reason why Pam is able to beat El Primo strictly comes down to her star power and her super. For every attack, she shoots out nine projectiles and her star power allows her to heal up 30 HP for every single one of those projectiles that hit an enemy brawler. Interestingly though, Pam could actually win this fight with either just her star power or just her turret. But having them together allows her to truly dominate El Primo, making her the strongest brawler in the game. At least I think that's how it works. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to let you know that you can definitely join my Discord server. There is a link in the description below. And if you do so, you'll find other people that love the game and this channel just as much as you do. And of course, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube members and my Patreon sponsors for helping support my channel in such a big way. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.